Hello there everybody, finally there are some things that looks like spring with sun and heat here in Sundsvall. So hooray, maybe there will be some <laughs> summer here after all. Uh, I spoke with Robert Z at Facebook and uh, he wanted me to show some Swedish music, recommend some Swedish music for him. Uh, he has gotten from Denmark. Karsten Olsen and she's got from Finland, both from Mika and Jarko, uh, my vinyl bar. Uh, and um, uh, he wanted something Swedish from me. <laughs> so I said, okay, why not? Uh, I did one, I think, in the beginning of my vinyl community career. Uh, but uh, it was a while. Uh, and as he also wanted some uh, suggestions on 80s synth pop from Sweden, uh, or synth pop overall, uh, I thought that why not why not make an updated one, make a new one with music uh, from Sweden uh, that uh, I can suggest if you can find it. Uh, I tried most of all to keep uh, with artists that sings in English uh, because Swedish may not be all that easy. But of course there are some that I. Um, uh, need to take that are uh, singing in Swedish that I think is so magnificent and uh, I will uh, in the description area uh, link to some YouTube videos for a lot of these artists and you can see the titles here for, for each and every one of them so I hope Robert that you are satisfied that every one of you are satisfied and that uh, you will be able to find these records. Uh, synth pop was the thing that you wanted me to show. Uh, synth pop in Sweden uh, hasn't been uh, that huge shanger, uh, even though there are a whole lot of Swedish uh, synth pop bands. Uh, many of them sing in, in Swedish. Uh, and during the 80s there were even more of them singing in Swedish. Uh, but when it comes to synth pop, Swedish synth pop from the 80s, uh, if I'm going to show some Swedish, I think one of the most successful Swedish synth pop bands uh, were this band, Lustans Lakeyer, uh, The Lackey of Lust, The Lackeys of Lust. And their album, Updrag i Genève, Mission in Geneva. Uh, and uh, this is an album sung in Swedish. But uh, you might say that this is one of the bands, this band's most popular albums. Uh, you can see here, typical, some typical uh, new wave style of the band. Uh, that uh, I think they was uh, more... Uh, trying to be some kind of a uh, spando ballet style uh, uh, and uh, they were very very big in the beginning of the 80s uh, they did actually an album in english but then they called themselves vanity fair but it is the same band uh, and that released this album a place in the sun uh, that contains a lot of songs that was um, originally in swedish but uh, now it's uh, translated into to, um, uh, English. So this album, Vanity Fair, uh, A Place in the Sun, is a little bit tougher to find here in Sweden, but I think you can find it on the internet, Robert. Uh, and uh, Lusans Lacair is really, really great. They were all about style. As you can see here, uh, it's a lot of style with uh, nice clothing and... Uh, luxury so so uh maybe they i think they sound more like a little new music uh, but i think the goal primary goal was the spando ballet uh, another band that uh, had some hits that uh, i actually liked 
uh, but they never had that kind of a huge hit. But I think they worth to mention is this band, NASA, uh, as in um, the American space program, uh, NASA, NASA, uh, and their album The Power of the Century. Uh, this is from 1985. Uh, I didn't say that Lustans Lacay was this these albums with Lustans Lacay was from 81 and 83. Uh, this is from 1985 and contains some of their, in my opinion, best songs. Uh, their lyric can sometimes be a little bit um, provocative, a little, little um, sexual uh, in a nice way sometimes, but. Uh, uh, still, it is great, great synth pop from the 80s. Uh, here is another band that I like very, very much. Unfortunately, they only did this album, uh, and it is a band called Fake. They had some great hits with songs like uh, Memories of Pan and Brick. Uh, and uh, this is uh, somewhere between ABC. Uh, Spando Ballet uh, and uh, this is a band I like very very much uh, it's a really really great album and but unfortunately this was the only album they released before they had a falling out and, and, and disbanded but uh, fake new art from 1984 I think it is uh, if you're going to go uh, into more modern times uh, we have uh, here a couple of synth pop band uh, during the 90s uh, synth pop uh, was uh, seen much as an underground scene uh, there were hardly any synth pop band during the 80s that uh, had any huge success much because Swedes are a little bit too trendy uh, and synth pop was uh, anything but trendy uh, uh, during the 90s uh, so, but uh, there were some uh, synth uh, pop bands that played synth pop. Had they had their own clubs? They were play. They were a uh, little much indie. Uh, so, uh, but but there were at least some some bands that had maybe not the best vocalists. They had pretty um, so vocalists. Uh, melodies were uh, okay, but the production production was pure synth pop. Uh, a little amateurish, but uh, very charming and great. Uh, here we have one of the most legendary one, Mobile Homes. Uh, this is uh, a self-titled. Uh, and um, uh, it's a real great synth pop album. Uh, not that much hit potential. Uh, not all that much hits. Uh, this is from 1990. Uh, but uh, it's charming synth pop for, uh, with a little dramatic touch, uh, very very depressive and dramatic touch in, in the lyrics and style. Uh, Mobile Homes uh, would later during the later 90s turn into an indie pop band that released this self-titled album, also self-titled. This is from 1998. Um, they worked as an indie pop band also, but it wasn't the same. Uh, I think they were better as a synth pop band, and uh, I also highly recommend uh, their latest single called Zero Zero. That is a step back to synth pop, and it sounds very much Depeche Mode in the in the in the production in the mobile home song Zero Zero. So check that out. Uh, there were also other bands. Here is another Swedish. Uh, band, a uh, very typical uh, Swedish little amateur style, uh, little so-so um, singer, but very, 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 very nice sounding. Uh, Children Within, not the best sleeve, but <laughs> Children Within and the album Countless Galax The Countless Galaxies from '94. Uh, and here we have from 2002. Uh, an album that uh, actually was uh, among the best uh, Swedish synth pop albums that I uh, that I heard back then, and it is a band 
that uh, only did this album as a synth pop band. They tried to uh, to develop themselves for every album, uh, which I uh, always been a little bit doubtful for. But uh, here in the album Electric Love Parade, this band Space Age Baby Jane was pure synth pop. Uh, it's a song here called No One Here Gets Out Alive that I think is absolutely marvelous. So Space Age Baby Jane and their album Electric, The Electric Love Parade. Uh, otherwise, uh, there are a lot of there are some synth pop band in modern era now. Uh, uh, during the years uh, now that actually have been doing, if not uh, su commercially successful, that uh, there are many who uh, search for them on the internet. Uh, there is a, and unfortunately I don't have any albums by them to show, but I can uh, tell them and you can search for them by yourself. There's a girl uh, uh, called Lisette Lisette. Uh, that uh, has a very unique and special style, very uh, over makeup, but uh, very uh, her own style. She does synth pop like uh, no one does, and she, 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 I think she's fantastic. There are some great, uh, uncreated, also great, great Swedish synth pop band, highly recommended. Uh, if you Stepping away from the synth pop a little bit, but uh, not totally. Uh, this band is not a synth pop band, uh, pure, but they have released an album that actually uh, is uh, sounding a whole lot synth pop. It's a band that I like very much called Kent. I think I mentioned them before uh, to you, Robert, when uh, you asked questions for my Q&A years ago. Uh, this is an album called Hagnesta Hill. Uh, Kent released, they, they don't uh, make music anymore, uh, they, they have quit doing music, uh, but they released uh, around a uh, uh, whole lot of albums during the 90s, the 00s and the, the 2000, uh, some during the 2010s also, uh, that were first a lot of indie rock, indie pop, but slowly transformed into more electronic synth pop style. Uh, they usually sung in Swedish, but they released a couple of albums in English, and this is one of my absolute favorite, Hagnesta Hill. Uh, this is released both in Swedish, but also in this version, in English. So this English version of Hagnesta Hill, uh, I highly recommend, uh, with the group Kent. This is an album where they're singing in Swedish, uh, but this album, Tillbaka till Samtiden, uh, this is uh, maybe, in my opinion, the closest thing a Swedish band has gotten to the pesh mode. Uh, and um, some really, this is definitely one of my absolute favorite albums by this band. So Kent, Tillbaka till Samtiden. Highly recommended. And this is from 2007. This one is from 2000. Uh, going back to the 80s now, now uh, we have leaving the synth pop. I'm sure um, you said uh, yeah, that you didn't want me to show ABBA, that you know them already. Uh, I wasn't going to either because I'm a huge ABBA fan, even though they had done some great stuff. But I'm sure that you have heard of Roxette uh, and uh, The Look and so on. This is the album with, uh, with The Look on. Uh, this is... Uh, Look Sharp from 1988, highly recommended. This one is my favorite though. This is their debut, Pearls of Passion from 1986. Uh, really, really soft Swedish pop that I like very, very much. But uh, rock set, highly recommended. Uh, they are uh, no longer, uh, as uh, the vocalist Marie Fredriksson passed away last year. Uh, and uh, I'm even even bigger fan of her as a solo artist. Uh, this is my favorite. Here she sings in Swedish. She mo mo mostly sung in Swedish on her solo albums. Uh, Marie Fredriksson uh, from Roxette and the album After Stormen, After the Storm, uh, from 1987. This is a 
I really, really love, love this album. A really fantastic album. Highly recommended. Uh, another band that was huge in the late 80s, uh, that also was close to getting uh, international, was this band, uh, Trans Dance. Some of Sweden seem to see them as cheesy, but I, I stand with the fact that I like trans dance. Uh, some kind of a rock disco style, 80s style uh, that I like very, very much. Uh, this is Dancing in the Shadows from 1988. So trans dance. Uh, having a couple of my absolute favorites. Uh, this is sung in Swedish, Eldkvarn. Uh, that I also am a huge fan of. Uh, and this is the album Himmelska Dagar from 1987. A really, really classic uh, double, al double, al double uh, album set. Uh, really, really awesome album. And really awesome band. Uh, this is a song here called Tag Min Han, Take My Hand, where the singer uh, Per Plura Jonsson thanks everyone that had meant to him during his life. It's very, very touching. Uh, I also mentioned a couple of times, but I can't mention him uh, too many times. Another favorite of mine, Peter Lemarque, uh, a singer-songwriter. Uh, so I don't think he's ever done a song in English. I don't know if he has. Uh, they're not on any one of them that I have, and I have every uh, studio album by him. Peter Lemarque, uh, who sings... Uh, he has very passionate and, and very intimate lyrics that I like very, very much. Uh, and very laid back production, laid back singing. I like his voice very much. This is my favorite from 1988, Närmare Gränsen, Closer to the Line or Border. Uh, and uh, real, real, maybe one of the best albums that I know from the 80s. This is... Uh, uh, New, uh, new one from 1992. This is The Things Inget Bättre. There's nothing better. Uh, and uh, also a uh, little less, a um, uh, little more acoustic than, than this one. A little more acoustic, uh, but really, really laid back and great singer songwriter in Swedish. So, highly recommended. Peter Lemark. Also, a real great one. This is a uh, rock singer. Uh, I don't have all that much rock in, in, Swe in Swedish rock. Unfortunately, that is not generally my style, even though there are exceptions. I like Joakim Tåström, or just Tåström. Uh, a rock singer that uh, he has a lot of energy. And this is also an album that sounds a lot Depeche Mode in Swedish, though. Central Massivet. The Central Massive. Uh, and he was singing in a band in the 80s called Imperiet. Also highly recommended. He was also a singer in a punk band called Ebba Grön that I'm not that fond of. But <laughs> I feel like I should mention it. Because everyone expects me to. It, or else <laughs> the Swedes will not be happy at me. Uh, this is also a band that I must recommend. This is Lolita Pop. Uh, that uh, I think is, um, you can call it a Swedish uh, pretenders, uh, sounds a lot of pretenders. Mainly, they have in the beginning of the careers made songs in Swedish, and uh, like this great album, Fem Söker en Skatt, uh, really great from 1982. Uh, but during the later part of the 80s, they started to do an album in English, like this one. Uh, this is uh, Love Poison from 1989 uh, in English. Real, real great Swedish uh, pop rock. Uh, a little heavier this one than the previous ones, uh, but real, real great. A little pretender style. Uh, going to some uh, more modern. We have indie pop from Sweden that I thought was really great. This is a band who is no longer existing, but that I thought was really great. It's an indie pop band called This Perfect Day. This is an album from 97 called C60, C60. Uh, and uh, this band also was pretty huge international. I, you might have heard of them. 
the Cardigans. Uh, here on this album, the first band on the moon, we have a song that was actually number two at Billboard, number uh, American hit chart, Love Fool. Uh, you might have been he hearing it, uh, and uh, uh, really, really great uh, band that, that uh, started as a pure indie pop band, but uh, leaned towards uh, becoming a uh, more, more a little poppier style, but but uh, with a more acoustic style. Uh, first band on the moon from 96. Uh, this is a little more modern from 2003. Long gone before daylight. Uh, also highly recommended. Uh, if you want blues rock, which I'm sure you like Robert, we have uh, this lady who has done uh, albums both in English and Swedish. That I, a girl that I like very much. I'm not a huge fan of blues rock, but I, this girl is real, real great. Louise Hofsten. She has made albums in, in uh, USA uh, a lot of time in Nashville and, and uh, all kind of places. Uh, this is uh, uh, Looking for Mr. God from 2012. Uh, this might be one of her, her, her most famous album from 1993. Rhythm and Blonde, that I have only on a cassette version, but Rhythm and Blonde, uh, containing some of her absolute biggest hits here in Sweden. So, highly recommended, Louise Hofsten. Uh, here is uh, a woman that I have discovered just recently, that I think is really, really great. Uh, this is a, a girl uh, named Panilla Andersson. Uh, also, a little singer-songwriter style, uh, 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 with a really, really great lyrics, great voice. Uh, She's most famous for singing in Swedish, like an album called Ö, <laughs> that um, you might be having a hard time finding, because uh, the title Ö is not in your, uh, in your uh, alphabet. Uh, but she's done songs, uh, albums in English as well. This is from 2004, Cradle House. And we have this one also, uh, Baby Blue from 2007. So also highly recommended, Pernilla Andersson. Uh, we have this girl that I like very, very much. Uh, also a woman that has been having some real great uh, international success. Robin, I have mentioned her before uh, a lot of times. Uh, this is uh, an album from 2002 called Don't Stop the Music. A little more uh, popular style uh, because she in the beginning in the 90s she sang more soul style today she does a whole lot of electronica but here is a more popular robin uh, but real real great great album uh, this is my favorite though this is from 1999 uh, this is swedish soul uh, at its best this is robin and my truth uh, real funky, re real uh, great, great rhythm, uh, and she sings amazingly. She's a real cute but also very soulful voice. So also, she's highly recommended, Robin. So, Robert, I hope that you are satisfied. If there are any more names, any more styles you want, uh, just let me know. Uh, however, <laughs> I can't guarantee that I have it though, but I like Swedish music very much, especially if it is a little more of a uh, synth pop or singer songwriter style. Uh, very much singing in Swedish because they are very, very, uh, some certain mood in my opinion. I like them very, very much. So until that, I hope that you, Robert, or anybody else have a real, real nice time, no matter where you are, no matter what you do. So take care and so long.